let's make a skinny robin mariner's compass. All you need is your skinny robin instruction book and ruler and a straight edge ruler with a 45 degree angle. It is best if the 45 degree angle is in the middle of your ruler. Read page one of your book for more info. For this demo, we will make an 18 inch compass block. Go to page four of your book and look at the table at the top of the page. Look under 18 inches and you will find out how many and how wide to cut your strips. For an 18 inch block, you need two four and a half inch background strips, two two and a half inch point one strips, one three inch point two strip, and one three and three quarter inch point three strip. Note that all strips are cut from the full width of fabric. Next, we will make a strip set by sewing the background and point one strips together, offsetting them by 45 degrees. To offset, lay your background strip right side up and place your straight edge ruler 45 degree line on the edge of the background fabric with the ruler right under the selvage. Take your point one fabric and place it right side down with the selvage just above where the ruler intersects the background strip on the right hand side. Pin the strips together. The size block you are making determines how many strip sets you will need and offsetting the strips will allow you to get more units out of a strip set. Now we'll sew these strip sets together using an accurate quarter inch seam. Sewing these strip sets is a good opportunity to make sure that you are sewing an accurate quarter inch seam. These first seams have no bearing on your finished block, so measuring them after they're sewn will help you to get a more accurate finished block. I suggest that for your blocks to finish at the correct size that you use more of a true quarter inch seam rather than a scant. The accuracy of your block and its finished size will depend on this accurate quarter inch seam in all the following steps. Let's stop here for a second to give you a little more basic information about block construction. As we were just discussing, your accurate quarter inch seam is imperative to your finished block size. If your seam is too wide, your block will finish too small from finished point to finished point. And if your seam is too narrow, it will finish too large. Also, notice how your raw block finishes kind of wonky around the outside. It is supposed to look this way. We never try to match anything up around this edge, and I have built plenty of room for finishing your block with the strip widths that are given. And if you follow my press as you go steps, your seams will be neat and allow your block to lay flat in your project. Yes, this strip piecing method is much quicker, but care must be taken in every step. Now we will press our strip sets. First, a quick word about pressing. I do not recommend using steam when pressing during the construction process. Because we will be working on the bias, you don't want to steam the pieces out of shape. Just get the seams laying flat and in the proper direction. I only use steam to press after my entire block is completed. Press the seam toward the background fabric by laying the point one strip right side up on your ironing board and pressing the background fabric up. Pressing in this manner will ensure that your seam will not be overlapping on the front side. Also, please take some care in your pressing as you work through the steps, making sure to also look at the back side and that the seams have been pressed neatly and in the correct direction. Next, we will cut the basic building units from these strip sets cutting at a 45 degree angle. Lay your press strip right side up on your cutting board with the background fabric at the top. Place the 45 degree angle on the seam line. And trim off the end of the strip set as close to the edge as possible 
and trimming off selvages. Flip your strip set so that the point one fabric is now at the top. Again, place your 45 degree angle on the seam line and then cut your first unit the same width as you cut your background fabric. Please note that no matter what size block you are making, you always cut the units apart the same width as you cut your background strip for that size block. For this block, I cut my background strip four and a half inches. So I am cutting the units apart four and a half inches. As you work down the strip set cutting these units, sometimes the angle and cutting measurement will not both line up. When this happens, simply flip your strip set back so that the background fabric is at the top and re-trim the end. Even though you may only be trimming a very tiny bit, this will make a big difference in the accuracy of your blocks. The accuracy of these segments is key to making accurate blocks. You will need eight of these units for a compass block. Another tip as you cut your units, place them in a nice neat pile so you will see right away if you cut one too wide or too narrow. In the next couple of steps, we will take our angled units and reconfigure them into what I call pie. First, we will cut off the outside point of the background fabric which I call background triangles. Place your straight edge ruler quarter inch line at the top of the unit seam and the edge of the ruler on the opposite background fabric corner. When you cut off this background triangle, you will notice that you cut into the point one fabric, resulting in a tiny triangle in the corner of your background triangle. This means you did it correctly. We will reserve these background triangles for step 12. Now we will use the Skinny Robin Ruler to shape these units. There is more info about my Skinny Robin Ruler on page 3 of your book. The main thing to remember is that solid lines go on seam lines and dashed lines go on raw edges. We will use Kite B of the ruler to make two cuts. The first cut I call left and low. This cut is made by lining up the lower left dashed line on the bottom raw edge of the unit and the solid line for the size block you are making on the seam. So for this block, it is the solid line with the 18 on it. Make sure both are lined up correctly and then we'll make our first cut. The second cut I call high and right. You will find the dashed line for your size block on the right hand side of the ruler and then slide the ruler down so that the dashed line comes to where you just cut. Then make sure that the side of kite B lines up on the seam line. Don't pay attention to the numbers on the side of the kite for making these cuts. And lastly, make sure that the center line of the kite lines up on the bottom point of the unit. When all three are lined up, go ahead and make the second cut. Don't worry if you cut into the background or not when making your second cut. It will look a little different for every size block due to rounding up the strip widths to the nearest quarter inch, but the cuts should all look the same within your block size. Continue to shape all eight units.
Take your reserved background triangles and pull off the tiny triangle left from cutting. Just gently tug and they should come right off. You will note that you now have a little tab at the corner. And a little tip, if you don't have a tab when pulling off the triangle, it means you didn't press the first seam in the proper direction. Now we'll sew these background triangles to the piece units to make pie. We want to sew these triangles on so that they will be flush with the side of the pieced unit when we are done. Place the pieced unit right side down onto the right side of the reserved triangle and matching the right edges. A ditch or V is created when these units overlap. We want to make sure that we start sewing our accurate quarter inch seam in this V. To do this, place your straight edge ruler down the side of the units to make sure they are overlapped one quarter inch and that where you will start sewing is a quarter inch from the edge. To verify that you have the units overlapped correctly, put your machine in the needle down position, slide your unit up to the needle and when you put your presser foot down, it should be positioned to start sewing your accurate quarter inch seam. You will always be sewing toward the tab on your background triangle and note that you are not trying to match anything up on this end of the unit. Do make sure to keep your quarter inch seam consistent for the whole seam. This seam determines where your point will finish in your block. Continue sewing all eight pies. Now we will press the seams toward the background triangle by laying the pieced unit right side up on your ironing board and pressing the background triangle up. I call this pressing method wing out. Note that your pie is flush where you sewed the triangle on and that when you turn your unit over, you have a nice stitching X at the top of the unit. You should now have eight Skinny Robin pies. Reserve four of these pies for step 22. We will sew the other four pies onto the point two strip by first offsetting them for later trimming. Lay one of the pies right side down onto the point two strip, matching the left edge below the selvage, and mark or put your finger where the pie meets the right side of the strip. Then rotate the pie onto the point two strip just below this mark. Sew this pie onto the point two strip and continue sewing, adding the other three pies, placing them about a quarter inch apart. Note that the number of pies that fit on a strip depends on which size block you are making. Press this seam toward the pies by laying the point two strip right side up and pressing the pies up. Wing out. Make sure to keep the point two strip straight while pressing to avoid warping the fabric and to create more accurate blocks. Rotate the strip so that the point two strip is at the top. We are basically going to trim these units flush with the right side of pie, but we are going to use a point of reference to make sure we cut these units apart accurately. If you don't have my angle ruler, you will place the 45 degree line on the point one seam. And if you do have my angle ruler, you will place the 67.5 degree line on the point two seam. You will only cut the point two strip. 
Don't worry too much if your pies are not totally flush with the ruler. This is usually a matter of over or under pressing and will all work out later when you give your raw block a final press. Again, cut only the .2 strip and never trim the pies. Now we will use the skinny robin ruler again to shape these units, but this time we will use kite A. We will line up the ruler in the same manner as we did when using kite B. The first cut is left and low. Line up the lower left dashed line on the raw edge of the unit and the solid line for the size block you are making on the seam line. When both are lined up, make your first cut. The second cut is high and right. Find the dashed line for your size block on the right side of the kite and slide the ruler down until this line hits where you just cut. Then make sure the side of the kite solid line is on the seam and the line that bisects the kite is on the bottom point of the unit. Make your second cut. Sometimes the bottom dash line might not line up perfectly when the solid line is on the seam. Again, this is probably due to a little over or under pressing. Just make sure that the solid line is lined up along the seam and that the bottom of this line is at the bottom of the seam. Then the dashed line will most likely be a little above and a little below the raw edge on both sides of the seam. Go ahead and make your cut. Continue to shape all four units. Now we will sew the reserved pies onto these shaped units to make big pies. We will use the same technique as when we made the previous pies to find the ditch or V to start sewing our quarter inch seam. And so the unit is flush on the side when sewn. Start in the needle down position to verify the quarter inch and sew a consistent seam. Remember that we are not trying to match anything up at the bottom. Again, make sure to sew a consistent quarter inch seam as this seam determines where your point will finish in your block. Sew all four units. Press the seam toward pie by laying the shaped unit right side up and pressing the reserved pie up. Wing out. Now you have four skinny robin big pies. Turn your units over to make sure your seams have been pressed neatly and to see the stitching X's at the top of the units. Next, we will place one of the big pies right side down onto the .3 strip. Just leave about a quarter inch or so below the selvage for later trimming. Sew all four big pies onto the .3 strip, placing them at least 3 8 inch apart. Note that the number of big pies you can fit on a strip depends on the size block you are making. Press the seam toward the big pies by laying the .3 strip right side up and pressing the big pies up. Wing out! Try to keep the .3 strip straight while pressing to avoid warping the fabric and to create more accurate blocks. Flip the .3 strip around so that it is at the top. Place your straight edge ruler horizontal line on the seam line and trim at a 90 degree angle to the right of the bottom of big pie, about an eighth to a quarter inch away from the unit. Cut only the point three strip and be careful not to cut into your big pie. Mm -hmm. 
You can fold the big pie back underneath your ruler if you want to be safe. Continue cutting all four units apart. Now we will use the skinny robin ruler one last time to shape the point three strip and to mark it for sewing in the next steps. We will go back to using kite B. You will line up the kite B guide mark located on the left side of kite B and place the mark of the size block you are making on the point one seam line. I call this step dash to the left. You will also line up the kite B leftmost solid line on the seam line and make the first cut. With the ruler still in place, we will then place a pin at the dot marker for the size block you are making and which you will find directly above the block size number. Place a pin between the ruler and fabric so that the point of it is right at the dot marker. Slide the ruler away and carefully make sure the pin goes down into the fabric exactly at this point, which is a quarter inch from the edge. Repeat for the other three units. We're almost done. Now we will sew these four units together to make our compass. You will pin these together matching the point one seam and the pin marker. First turn one of the units over and place your straight edge ruler quarter inch line along the edge. Place a pin into the stitching at the point one seam at the edge of the ruler and then stick this pin into the pin marker that was previously placed on the other unit with right sides together. Make sure to line up your edges and then sew these units together, starting at the top of the pieced unit, sewing through the pin marker and finishing just over the point three seam. Do not try to manipulate the point three fabric. Just let it angle off how it was previously sewn. Pin the other two units together and then we will sew them together. If you want your block to have a reverse applique square center, you will want to stitch just over the point three seam and backstitch. There is more info about this at the end of this video. Which way to press these seams depends on how you want to finish the center of your block. If you are doing a traditional finish round circle center, you will want to press your seams toward point three, laying the bottom unit right side up and pressing the other unit up. Note that this is opposite to the way you pressed all the other points. We press this way so that the center will sort of wind around in the middle and lay flat for finishing. See the clip at the end of this video if you want to see how to press for a reverse applique square center. Turn your units over to make sure the seams have been pressed neatly. Now we will sew these two halves together, one seam at a time.
go ahead and sew this first seam. Press the seam in the same manner as before. Pin the last seam together. And sew the last seam. Go ahead and press this last seam. At this point, I like to measure my block from point to point to see if it is coming out close to the proper size. It is best if it actually measures a little smaller than it is supposed to at this point, since we haven't yet given the raw block a final pressing. The more you press, the bigger the block will get, so if it already measures to size at this point, you want to be careful not to press it any larger. Here I use a little steam or spray starch to give my block a final press and get it ready for finishing into my project. Look at the finishing instructions in your book for different ways to finish your raw block into your project and check out more of my videos on my website and free app for more finishing instructions. For a reverse applique square center, we will sew all four seams before pressing. Remember that we stopped our stitching on these four seams just over the point three seam and back stitched. Then we will turn the block over and press in the same manner as we have all along, pressing toward big pi. Just press the very outer points of the block and not the center of the block. We want the seams to get started in the proper direction. Once we get those seams going in the general direction, turn the block over and continue to press the seams toward Big Pi. We will also pick up the point three strip and pull it up all the way to the bottom of point two. Keep pressing going around the block and picking up the point three strip. Pretty soon you will see that we are creating a square shape. You'll turn your block over and give it a final press and then it's ready for your reverse applique square center. Just put a piece of fabric underneath, sew around the top and you're done.